So she's like a, a communist knockoff of a real Maybe like an upgrade. That's Hold a, him. Yeah, it sounds like a commie. But listen, here's the thing. I've got some good news we're, for you we're all, we're all communists here in the UK. I've just come down with the gift. I just have. I have right now. Just now? Yeah, just now. And, uh... I don't think it works like that, Eric, hold but on, okay. Hold on, hold on. I'm getting something. I'm getting something. Um, Kestrel, you have a problem or a barrier in your life of some sort. Yes? I'm getting something. Uh, no. You're struggling to that, understand. That for someone else. You're, oh, it's your dead relative. It starts with a J or a D or a... A B. Jim. 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 Yes, Jim. Jim, of course. <laughs> Jim. Jim's dead. Uh, oh, I'm not dead anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the son of Eric. And now you can talk to me. I can't believe it. Oh, you like me? I just saw him yesterday. Oh, I got hit by a lorry. Yes, I did. Just recently. That is a good impression of Jim, though. Yeah, it is. Well, I think he's still alive. Well, he, no, he's just, he's just text me now. He's, he's still alive. Listen, I don't just communicate with the dead. I can communicate with the living as well, psychically. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow, multifaceted. Mm -hmm. Now they can't. They can't intentionally communicate with me. It's just. I said. But what this made me think was that the people, the people's medium. Who? Who? What? What other medium is there for? You know, it's like are there animal mediums? Are there people out there that go around sort of giving messages to dogs or, well, or you know just wild animals? Like, oh, you over there, crow over there. I've got a message for you. Your ancient grand great 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 grandfather has a message for you. Okay, well the thing is, it's not. She's not distinguishing between people and animals. She's distinguishing between commoners like you. And the royalty. Now she's saying she mm. is willing to work for commoners. That's what she means. Yeah, I, I guess so. And it's a pretty good, pretty nice of her, really, because she could easily be the queen's medium. Think of all the dead relatives the queen has. Well, maybe, maybe I'm just got the. Yeah. That would be a lot easier. And, uh, but I think maybe I'm getting the wrong end of the stick with the name here. Maybe she just means like. She is a me. She's like an average of all the people. <laughs> oh yeah, well, she could be. You're right. That makes sense. She's the. She is that one individual who actually represents all the averages. She's average height, average looks, average intelligence, average social grace, average everything. She, it does look like that, to be honest. Mm. Well, anyway, probably if you'd got everyone together and just mushed them together. That's what it looked like. If I were going to be the medium to the queen, I'd say, "I'm getting something from a dead relative. Is it a, a king, <clears throat> King George? Is there a King George in your past? Oh yes, there is. Ta da! How about a Richard the Third? They'd be so amazed at my ability. Yeah, well, you'd have uh, you'd have a lot to work with there, wouldn't you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No one would know how I possibly could have gotten all of that without magic powers. Of course, you'd, 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 the first place you'd go is, uh, if you were doing a psychic reading for the Queen, you'd go, there's a name coming through, it's, uh, it's, it's coming to me, yeah, yeah, it, it's Diana, she wants to know why you killed her, you bitch. Oh, I did not kill Diana. She crashed in an automobile in France because she was hanging out with tawdry commoners. Tawdry, I say. I think the Queen uses the word tawdry a lot. <laughs> probably. Probably. It's probably one of those words that she says to herself, I'm using that word too much today. Mm -hmm. Just stop using tawdry. Yeah. But if there wasn't so much tawdry <laughs> shit all around me, I'd be able to... Let me let me get a thesaurus up here on my fucking iPad X or whatever it is. Right. She also uses the word severe a lot. I will take a most severe <laughs> approach towards this. The term means that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's the way of saying it, kick ass and take names. Oh. 
I sure have been clean for a long time. Like 10 years or 20 years or even more than that, maybe. Yes, Queen, you've been queen a long time. That makes me very, very important. I know, you are very important. You're the queen. Yes, give me my royal scepter. I'm going to conk you over the head with it. Just for fun. How long has the queen been queen? Dunno, probably all of my life. Let's see. Probably it's all thirty five years. I think she <coughs> I don't know, I've been interested well, in I'm, even though I have no <coughs> care about it. I'm Googling it right now, Casual, so I'm gonna give you a firm answer. I, I think it was in the sixties, to be honest. Or the seventies. Mm hmm. Sixty five years. My life. Oh my god. <coughs> On February sixth, two thousand sixteen. She became the first British monarch to celebrate a Sapphire Jubilee commemorating, <laughs> commemorating 65 years on the throne. Thanks, Booper. Let's see. List of monarchs in Britain by length of reign. Let's see. Elizabeth II, 66 years, 133 days. Victoria, 63 years, 216 days. George III, from 1760 to 1820, 59 years. James VI of Scotland, from 1567 to 1625, is 57 years. Henry III, 56, that's from the 1200s. In the 1300s, Edward III, 50 years. And then William I in, in the 1100s, 48 years. Lyle, Lyle Woolen of Gwynedd from 1195 to 1240, 45 to 44, 44 to 45 years. And Elizabeth I, 44 years, that's 1558 to 1603. David, David the second. I didn't even know you guys had a king named David. David the second. David, king David. Thirteen twenty nine to thirteen seventy one. Forty one years. Pretty good. You know what? I've just had a, a bit of a creepy thought, really. You know when you donate to like some starving African children or you, you donate to, to give them like vaccines or to give them nutrition to keep them alive. And say I did this 20 years ago. Yeah, I could have done that 20 years ago. I could have donated a tenner and that would have like given some kids some life-saving medication. Then 16 years later, like all those kids have now had like two kids two or three kids each now I need to am I morally responsible to pay you know 50 quid for their vaccinations and them you know no 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 I would say that that the fact that somebody's alive right now is not anybody's moral responsibility and the tending to the needs of the people who are alive is their own moral responsibility by and large. So I would say it was a mistake to give, to give charity in the first place, though. I certainly don't think it's a good idea to give charity. I think it's bad. By and large. Some kinds of charity are okay, I guess. But I usually think it's bad. Goodwill and friendship is different. Like, why am I going to give something to somebody I don't know who has no weight with me when I could give something to somebody I do know who deserves something? You know? So it's like, I'm pretty generous if anybody asks me, like friends ask me for something, like, hey, can you help me move? Like, yeah, okay, I can do that. 
or stuff like that, you know. But I'm not one who wants to waste time and energy giving to charity. I mean, hey, listen, you want to, you feel bad because you see homeless people around? Oh, well, give, give me money. Well, you're not a homeless person. I know, but don't worry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it for them, for sure. Yeah, that's... yeah that, I mean, that's why I don't give anymore. But um, uh, I do make sure to uh, do things to help others. You know, I do my uh, do my voluntary work. and um, I give cigarettes to homeless I'm people. hoping to. That helps them. The thing is, homeless people here are a different matter, I think, than they are in America. But... I don't know what the situation is in America with uh, entitlements, but uh, here, you know, nobody should, everybody is actually entitled to, to shelter here. Uh, homelessness only happens, um, and it happens, it's, in happen, it's happening increasingly, and it's down to drugs. Some, some, some rough sleepers, though, actually have flats and things like that, and... Um, what their problem is is they might find themselves getting kicked out of those flats because they're unable to not deal drugs out of them. That's the problem. Uh, or they may, you know, and this, there's a there's a small um, percentage of people who actually can't really be helped because even though everyone's entitled to shelter, these people um, will get kicked out of the council government housing and they will get kicked out of hotels and things like that 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 are, you know that would be the the fallback um and uh, they can't stay in hostels which would be the fallback after that uh due to their own behavior but they're not insane enough to in turn and so they sleep in the toilets and things like that but that's 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 homelessness in the UK, you see. I don't, I don't know what it's like in the USA. So I don't really give, unless... Because these people are mentally on their arse, you know, if that makes sense. Mentally, they're on their arse. So sometimes I help them out a little bit with something because they just look so pathetic and, you know, what can you do? I mean, I, I've been known to give money to homeless people before, and I've certainly been known to give cigarettes to them. I typically do. I just... Um, Well, I don't believe in paternalistic altruism, unlike Kimberly. Kimberly is a proponent of paternalistic altruism, which is to say, if you ask somebody the question like, okay, let's say for whatever reason you've you've given $50 to this charitable organization, and they contact you and say, okay, listen, you've got a choice. We can either spend the $46.22 minus administrative costs you know, uh, on a mosquito net that Pablo needs, according to us. Or you can send the $46 to Pablo and let him send it how he wants. Which would you prefer? What do you say? Um, to be honest, I lost you there for a second. Okay, so you, you, you've you given $50 to a charity. They contact you. They say, you got two choices. We can <clears> buy a $46, $42 mosquito net and give it to Pablo, the, the net, which we think he needs. Or you can have us just send the $42 directly to Pablo. What happened to my other $8? Oh, we need that for administrative costs. Well, that is the thing, isn't it? You know, and it's uh, and how much of that really do they need for administrative costs, uh, and how much of it is just bureaucracy? And uh... okay, but fine. But what choice do you make? With it, it, we're assuming a pretty good charity here. They're only taking eight bucks out of your fifty bucks. So, what do you want to do with the other forty-two dollars? You're going to give it to Pablo directly. Or you want to buy the mosquito net? Well, if I'd given them the money, then I would I would actually have a goal in mind. I'm not just sending it to Pablo, you know, for, okay, well, for the listen, sake of it. I'm a, you know, if he's in a malaria-stricken let me, country... Let me change the scenario. Let me the, change the, the scenario, okay? What happened was you lost $50, and somebody turned it into the police. 
you had written your name on it for some reason, but you didn't get around to checking the police station until after the time that they hold it until see if anybody picks it up, right? So, um, mm -hmm. so they, as a response, they say, well, okay, this is forfeited money, so we're gonna give it to this charity for $50. However, you walk into the uh, station just after they give it to charity. You can't get it back anymore. You forfeited your right to it because of the time you took to get to the police station. But the charity understands that it was your money, so they say, here, I'm giving you this option, Kestrel. Which do you prefer? We're talking about Pablo. He's in Venezuela. I'm sorry. He's in uh, Argentina, and he's very poor. And we say Mosquito Net, and he would prefer to just get the cash uh, and spend it on whatever he wants. Now, Pablo has a, a wife and two daughters, and he lives a, he's a little llama farmer here. He's got three llamas, and boy, are things tough for him. Yeah, I'd have to look into it, wouldn't I? We are not going to give you any more information about it. There's nothing more you get to know. But I, I would say it's not my money. This is a trap. You're trying to entrap me because it's actually illegal to deface uh, the Queen's currency. And then I'd, I'd leave. Okay, well, you, you gave them American dollar bills for some reason. It's not illegal to deface those. Let's see, how can I get out of this one? Um. <laughs> <laughs> you could choose not to choose. You could say, you decide what to do with the charity. I don't give a fuck. <clears throat> yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really care. <laughs> what do they say? But please, we desperately need to know. <laughs> one of our corporate rules is one of our corporate, one of our corporate rules is we can't use the money until until the we've given the customer a binary choice between two alternatives. <laughs> now, as a consequence, we've tried to ask the police to give us the choice, but they say no, it's cash with money, so we can't give them the choice. Please, please. Otherwise, this money will be tied up here in this charity forever. We won't be able to spend it on anything. But just sit here. I would tend to do what uh, Jane said because, um, you know, and I, I presume that they're giving him a mosquito net because it lives in a country where that is necessary. <laughs> and, Jane, that's uh, pretty snappy. You know. Jane says mosquito net. If Pablo could manage his money, he could buy his own damn net. Well... I mean, Pablo's probably never had forty-two dollars before to manage. Is it, Wait, what kind of mosquito net is it? What? What kind of mosquito net is it? It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant, that Chloe. It's made never out of, ask that again. It's made out of whispers of irrelevancy. <laughs> you, it's a woven what? together tapestry of irrelevancies. That's what it is. Why is it irrelevant? What kind of net? Well, I mean, why is it relevant? Well, yeah, why is it relevant? Well, because it makes a difference. What is that difference? Um, like, it makes a difference because it depends on the kind of net and so, like, whether or not I will pay for that kind of net. <laughs> Can you, can you Chloe, think of your reasons before? What's the That's difference, the though, between the kind of net you'll pay for and the kind you won't? Well, if the oh. net was manufactured, like, in um, Honduras by slave labor, then I would have a moral problem with it. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, I mean, if it's like... Yeah, that's just a piece of shit, you know? Why should I pay for that if it's just not going to work for him? Okay, well, what if, though, the slave owners in Honduras donated the proceeds of their slave enterprise to charity? For mosquito. A charity to help homeless mosquitoes. <laughs> the slave owners, they donate all the proceeds from their slave labor factory to an anti-slavery <laughs> um, charity. 
That's a dick. So it cancels each other out. Could work. morally neutral, right? No. Oh. They only have to keep 42% for administrative costs. What if it's keeping that inside a mosquito net? You don't need a double mosquito net, Chloe. You don't need two mosquito nets, okay? You just need one mosquito net. And mosquito Why? Well, because <coughs> that's the whole point of a mosquito net is that it's it's it excludes mosquitoes from your environment. <laughs> I mean, you, why would you get two nets? I mean, you could get two nets. You could make it double hard for them to get in, I guess. Um, but I don't, can see. why would they break through the first one? How would they break through it? It's a mosquito net. It's designed to stop them from getting in. Two nets. Two nets, I imagine, is just going to be too warm. Or you know, you might just you might just end up training mosquitoes to become ever more powerful as you produce ever more layers of nets between them and your tender, tender, delicious blood. Then you know, just become these super powerful, like armor-piercing bullets that just can pierce through anything to get to you. Oh, that's too much. So that's when you that's the risk you run when you put two nets up, Chloe. You could start a chain reaction of of oh, escalation. It, well it's arms it's an arms race between you and the mosquitoes, basically. It sounds horrible. Yeah. All those pesky mosquitoes coming at you. I'll tell you one thing that that uh that's nice about the chickens is while the chickens do attract some flies, they also eat flies. They eat a lot of flies, so that's a good thing. They're always jumping up and catching them out of the air and stuff. Like, how do you know this? Who does? Imelda? <coughs> what? <coughs> 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 I'm dying over here. Someone help me. And thus it is. This is the sort of weirdness that uh, comprises talking with famous people. Jane's comment, I want to say about that. It's actually the case that people who who have less money, like people when they have less money, make poorer financial decisions. The same people. Okay, so like when, when I'm broke, I make poor financial decisions than when I'm richer. Like, I'll spend my money on bad things or something. That's the what the, the research shows. I don't necessarily find that to be the case with, with me. I think when I'm broke, I make better financial decisions. But... Wait, so then, what about credit cards? Well, I don't even have any credit cards. Uh, I've got a credit card, and I'm like 300 and some odd dollars in debt. I mean, you don't have to be broke to accept charity, in theory. No, but you said that statistically, people in, that are short on money, if not completely broke, make poor decisions. Pablo is at least broke enough to accept charity, therefore I'm calling his decision making into question and, and I'm not going to hand him more money to make more mistakes with. But what if your donation makes him less poor, less broke, so therefore he makes better decisions? Would you rather improve his decision making or his or or help him make the right purchase? I'm not that interested in I mean, I'll help to a certain extent. But Pablo's also a grown man who needs to figure it the fuck out for himself. Remember I'm, I'm not I'm, Remember how you got how the money got to Pablo, right? It, it was yours, but then you lost it, it went to the cops, all that stuff. So it, it's like you you're exactly. that's with a choice in a vacuum here. You're not ha you're not gonna be asked to donate anything more because also, you've already made it clear you don't want to donate to this shit. Right. Also it was fifty dollars and that is actually that makes him a millionaire in Venezuelan currency. Yeah, or Argentinian. He's right but on the border. If you, if you give him you give him <laughs> if you give him that money he can become a, a venture capitalist. Right. But if you choose to give him a mosquito net. 
you know, so I made the wrong decision there, really. Right. Turns out that what Pablo was going to do was... Pa- Pablo wanted Sorry, to the, the cash so that he could invest it in cocaine and begin dealing drugs, which would get him out of the uh, farming business entirely. He could become like the dude from Scarface, you know, Al Pacino. Well, if he was in the farming business, why didn't he just farm drugs? Mm. So he's not really that good at uh, coming up with solutions. Well, he did, but then a pack of wild llamas came by and ate them all. He's, only, he's got three llamas now because the rest of them all died of overdoses. Okay, so what you could do is, like, you could, like, make coats out of, like, the llama's fur. Yeah. And, pa- like, make, and, like, Pablo profit doesn't off of know that. how to do any of that shit, okay? Pablo can barely keep the llamas alive. He's... Look, he's, look that's, just, that's no good either. If, 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 if a bunch of llamas came along and ate up all your co- cocaine plants, you'd have a bunch of very fast llamas in which you should... Uh, <laughs> just start a llama racing facility. No, because most of them and died of overdoses. Just, just the profits roll in. <laughs> well, I mean, you got a point there, Kestrel. You are making some sense. Pablo is like an idiot. Pablo's not an idiot, okay? Listen, Pablo's just hard on his luck. He just, you know, he had some bad breaks. He, uh, he had an excellent crop of uh, heroin plants the other day. And they were eaten by a pack of alpacas. Similar to llamas, but a little bit different. So, you know, he listened. You mean poppies? Yeah, poppies. Heroin plants, they're called. Guess for all. Isn't, uh, isn't, it, isn't it cocaine that they grow in, it, grow in that neck of the woods? Uh, well, they can't grow anything down there. They grow methamphetamine plants, I hear, as well. <laughs> Yeah, in case you didn't yeah know, I, I heard you from. grow X, X breed. Yeah. Wait, what possibly? Uh, you broke up, dude. Oh, the insanity around here. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> Enjoy your day.